Hey, we are delighted that you are joining us tonight for this awesome program. We're, I'm Shannon Piggott. I'm from Fredericksburg. I am a professional clinician and trainer, and I am here to moderate the session tonight with our great friend, um, Mr. Benjamin Baldus. Also, though, before we start, I want to thank Stock Horse of Texas for putting on this fabulous program for us. Cannot think of a better community of riders, professional horsemen, and of course, our executive director extraordinaire, Jill Dunkel, for this fabulous program. So tonight, um, Mr. Baldus, Ben, as we all call him and love him, will be sharing words of wisdom about his reigning, I'll call them secrets and tricks, but both from the showman and also from the judge's perspective. I had an opportunity to visit Ben yesterday at his place in Gainesville. And oh gosh, what a tremendously professional operation uh, down to the absolute um, lines from the rake to make the walkways look beautiful. He's just done a tremendous job. I'm very excited for you to learn from him tonight. So Ben, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started or something kind of unique you'd like to share with our friends, uh, our shop friends? Good evening, everybody. I'm excited that you're on tonight. We're gonna have a fun time talking about how to train our horses, enhance them for the show pen, the showing, the training, and a plan for the new year. It's gonna be really fun. One of the things kind of, uh, you know, we've moved from Wagner's where I started training horses uh, to our own business in Bowie and then now to Gainesville. And it was, it was, it was a beautiful facility here. We absolutely love it. And sometimes we go back and reminisce about where things started. And today in the round pen, I was working the horses and cattle and uh, we have a miniature pony mixed in. It's a wild pony. And, um, and we work him periodically. I've had him for eight years now. And when we were first in Bowie and uh, did not, was not able to afford a flag or a ramp or cattle, I was getting ready for the Rain Cowers World Show. I had two horses from Wagner to show and I hooked the, uh, the wild pony to a cable on each end of the arena that I had done. And I worked him back and forth like a live flag to prepare for that world show. And uh, that was all we had. We made do with it. And, uh, made a lot of great memories with him. Uh, it's fun to see where we kind of started and, and grateful for where we're at today and the process. You know, we just love the process and what we're learning and developing more horses, more customers and getting to help people with our horses. And we're looking forward to helping everyone tonight with, our, with what we're going to learn and talk about from showing and a judge's perspective. Yeah, that's what's really unique in that, you know, you've got a, a tremendous showman's hat on and the way that you present yourself and have such a presence in the show pen. Um, but being a carded judge gives you really, gosh, just so much more insight. And that's what makes tonight really unique. I think one of the things that I was thinking about both as a competitor and a coach of other people is from the judge's perspective, Ben, what are some things that make you notice a rider when they come in that reigning pen? And, you know, what makes them kind of stand out to you as a judge? Absolutely, Shannon. And, and it, it can be uh, anything from their horses, a really elegant mover, a very natural mover as they trot to the middle or lope in. That horse is a very, just a, a very attractive horse, a great confirmation. Or it could be that it's a very professional appearance from the, uh, the, the rider's dress, hat, shirt, shaps. It's very professional looking. It's very clean. It's put together well. And um, that very first impression helps the judge to sit up and pay attention. And that's something, you know, you're thinking that judge is sitting there watching maybe 50 or 60 runs already. And you want something as you very first start that gives a positive impression. And it can be the difference of a horse coming in on a, a pretty loose rein, looking very happy as he trots to the middle. Uh, or uh, uh, something like that that gets a judge's attention and says, this looks good, I want to watch this. And they're already sitting on the positive side of what's going to happen in that run. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I know that varying times when I'm showing, you know, depending on the situation or the horse for my nerves, you know, as you start to enter that show pen, you know, you kind of build this pattern up of, of being, you know, nervous or thinking your horse might be nervous when you first enter the pen, what are some strategies that you use as a competitor to kind of quell those nerves? Absolutely. The, the thing that I focus on as I'm entering the arena is taking some slow, deep breaths. 
And uh, the slow, deep breaths or centering breath is something that will help me to focus on the task at hand, helps me just focus on doing my job and kind of block out some of the other pressures, whether it's audience or, uh, you know, just the other pressures we have in our business helps me to focus on what's happening. And thinking through my run, really breaking it down start to finish. And th this happens for me mentally days before I show, weeks before I compete, planning that raining pattern, what it's gonna feel like, what my horse will feel like as I enter the arena, all the way through the pattern, uh, and, and really kind of having that plan in mind helps me to go in there and be relaxed and just execute the plan that I've been running in my mind for the last several days. I can then just execute it and put it into motion. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, that's a, a really big part of it. You know, we've all had the situation where we've maybe overspun um, or underspun. And so much of that is mental. Do you have any like secret tricks or anything that you do you want to share with us that, that keeps you out of that mistake? Well, other than we've all done it, I've been there myself over spinning and it's a, it's a terrible feeling to walk out after a good run and realize I just marked a zero. That's, it's, it's a terrible feeling. I've been there. As much as, I, as I'm getting ready for, a, for an event and showing a variety of horses, I, I practice my spins in the location of the arena like I'm showing. So as an example, uh, I may run down there, execute a, a stop and then say, okay, this is my three and a half spins to the right. And I'll pause, I'll sit there, I'll take a deep breath, I'll move my hands and legs exactly like I'm showing and start my three and a half spins to the right. And I'll count those the whole time. And again, every horse has a different feel. So some turn really fast, some turn a little bit with a rougher cadence, but I make sure I'm comfortable knowing exactly what three and a half is gonna feel like and also counting. And, and I, I practice that a lot. Like if I start two weeks out from a horse show and I'm counting and I go, wow, that, that felt a little bit rough or I wasn't sure I was a three and a half right there. I make sure I really practice counting my spins before I ride into the arena. Yes, and, that's a horrible one to leave. And, and the worst is when you know that you underspun or overspun. And that happens sometimes too for some of the folks. No, it does. The last time it happened for me, I didn't even realize it. And I, I had worked my cow and had a smoke and fence run, of course. And then I realized zero. And I was like, what? That was terrible. <laughs> didn't even know I did. Well, that, that, that's awesome. That's really awesome. And the other thing is that, you know, we've all done it. So even though it hurts, um, it you're not alone, you're not alone. You know, as a, this is a question for the, the, you know, with your judge's hat on, you know, every horse seems to have strengths and challenges um, in terms of the maneuvers and the reining pin. And it sure is easy to get caught up in the challenges that they have or thinking, oh, you know, a spin to the left isn't good or whatever it might be uh, for that horse. Are there some maneuvers for the reiner that you feel are really important to, to score well? And I'm not talking a 77 or 76, but a solid 71, 72. Are there specific maneuvers that everyone should really be thinking, I need to make these pretty solid? Yes, the maneuvers I focus on the most for the reining would be the sliding stops. Within that pattern, oftentimes we have between three and four stops depending upon our pattern. So there are three to four opportunities to plus half those stops. So if we have a four stop pattern and we plus half our stops, you know, you're going to be sitting on a 72 just off of your, off of your stops alone. Um, so really working and focusing on the stops is, is the primary part of the reining spins and, and lead changes and circles are right there with it, but we make sure to really focus on our, can focus on our stops on our reining horses. Yeah, you know, I, one of the things I, I really appreciate about watching you showman is that your horses consistently stop really well and are really pretty. And so I'm sure there's some magic formula for that other than practice, practice, practice. But it, it, you can tell that you spend a lot of time on them. Yes, ma'am. That's and you're exactly right. That is the magic formula. Lots of work, lots of hours and lots of practice. That is great. That is great. So 
You know, one of the things that I sometimes think about with uh, these horses within our community, you know, a horse start with one competitor and they help that competitor. And then as that competitor improves and grows through all the great educational opportunities with shot and lots of practice with great professionals, that horse maybe moves on to someone else. And then that horse teaches another rider. And those horses kind of, they, they have a great career of teaching people, but that career, you know, that, that, what I want to ask you about here is what about longevity in these horses? Like how, what can we do as riders, especially in reining, to help these horses keep going strong for a really long time? Absolutely. And that's one of the things I love seeing in our sport is the longevity of the horses and, and how a horse gets to help multiple people start out their career showing. Uh, yeah. it's, it's really great. And one of the things that I think about as I'm showing my horse and, and planning this next year ahead is getting them ready to go show. and. Um, one of the things like, so starting the year is not overdoing them right off the bat. So we might get ready for this raining coming up and those horses um, maybe are, haven't been in the pen for three or four months and they might first step in the pen be a little anxious or have a little uh, pressure from last year. We finished the world show. That was a couple of hard runs in a row. That was their last big run. And they might not be ready to go show hard. So my goal when I first start showing again to help that horse have longevity is to keep that horse comfortable and keep his anxiety or his pressure down in the show pen. So thinking about that, if I've got a horse that is, is pretty consistent and solid and he's, he's a big stopper, my goal is to kind of go in there and be clean through the circles and spins, marking zeros, and then maybe plus half a stop or two to where that horse is very comfortable and I'm marking a 71. And that's my goal to, to show that horse to a 71 the first couple of times. And then as he's comfortable, I might step it up a little bit or as I'm gearing up for a bigger event, uh, maybe a final situation or like a world show situation, I've got to show him uh, pretty aggressively for a couple of times, but I'm saving those bigger runs for bigger events. I'm not going full speed every time I enter the arena. I'm trying to keep that horse where he's comfortable and where he's happy doing his job and not overdoing it. You know, I, I see sometimes in the reigning circles, for instance, uh, the horse trots to the middle and he's already on the muscle and he already wants to run and someone lopes him off and they just go as fast as they can. Well, next time that horse is going to have more anxiety and more pressure built up. And if you got him to sit still for three seconds and then you blasted him off, he's probably only going to sit still for one second before he blasts off next time. And you're either creating more anxiety and more pressure, or you're helping to reduce that pressure and that anxiety the horse feels. So I feel like by practicing at home, and like you're talking about with the stops, like we practice our stops on a pretty regular basis, consistent basis, and we practice them at a, at a high rate of speed where that horse is really comfortable. So I can actually get to the show pen and back off a little bit from my practice and have that horse be really comfortable because I'm just going a little under where I practice. Most of the time you see people go the other way. They practice slow and then show really aggressive. Well, that just creates more and more anxiety that every time the horse enters the pen, he has more pressure and more anxiety that he's never done these maneuvers this fast, except when he shows. Well, pretty soon you'll ride that horse in and his heart will go to racing and the adrenaline comes up and he won't think through the pattern. So for me, practicing at home and going slow at home and um, helping that horse be confident um, and really quiet in the show pen to where he's being shown a little under the speed of practice will help him last a long time. Yeah, that's great. And you had made a comment the other day that really stuck with me and I thought would stick with a lot of other people, which is kind of your goal unless it's a really big show is to is to show that horse at three quarters of its speed absolutely and i thought that was a great thing for us all to remember you can always ask for more that's right that's right yeah, yeah anything where we can go at three quarter speed or 70 percent of what the horse has like say we've got 100 percent ability if we dial it back to 70 percent and show him at 70 or 80 percent of what he has then he's in his inside of his comfort zone and if that horse is comfortable and confident, he'll show for a long, long time that way. 
great message. Great message. You know, a lot of, um, uh, with a lot of the folks that, that I ride with and work with, um, we talk a lot about, you know, what are the penalties that a rider <laughs> has complete control over avoiding? <laughs> as, the, as the judge, what are some of those penalties that we really, as a rider, need to be sure that, you know, we, we stay out of that penalty box? I think some of the biggest ones that stand out to me um, right off the bat for the showman is, uh, is staying accurate on your pattern, you know, so pattern placement, accuracy, and, and with that accuracy of your pattern, you know, one of the biggest penalties we see and most often is not getting past your markers in the rainy, you know, so not getting past the end marker, not getting past the middle marker. Those are areas where, where it's truly all on the rider. They asked the horse to stop too early or they built speed too early. Something happened, the rider had control over, and we just kind of dropped the ball there on getting past the marker. And that, that two-point penalty is a big one that's completely avoidable uh, if we are more aware of our pattern and where we're at and when we're showing. Um, another one is, you know, probably dragging a lead. You know, that's a place where as a rider, if we're doing our diligence and setting that horse up and preparing it for the lead change. We're not going to drag very many leads, but dragging leads are something we see pretty often from the judge's chair and those penalties eat up a good run pretty fast. And what I think about, again, getting ready to go show is my number one goal, staying penalty free. So when I'm, when I'm practicing, I practice with the markers in the arena so I know where I'm at in the arena. I know where the center line is. I know where the end markers are. Uh, even if you're just, um, you know, working outside of the house, put some cones out there, put some buckets out there so you get comfortable knowing where those end markers are at and how far to run to get past your end markers. Uh, we do that a lot in practice, and I'll do it at the show so I know where the markers are. And I'm really aware of that pattern placement and being accurate to avoid those big penalties. Yeah, that, that's great. We, even with the absolute best stop in the world with a plus one and a half, you can't overcome that two point penalty if you don't hit your marker. You got it, that's exactly right. Well, Ben, we're gonna play, uh, play a video here um, that um, is really beautiful and it's your run. And uh, I'd really, if you could share with folks what you're thinking about as a showman or what you see as a judge, just have to, however it comes to you, walk us through this run. Bill's going to cue it up for us and we'll all watch it with you. Okay, sounds like fun. So as Jill gets set up, okay, here we go. Okay, so this looks like Abilene from uh, a couple of years ago. Um, probably trotting in on Woodrow and um, I'm thinking don't don't move my leg too quickly be really careful sit still let him get all the way to the middle a couple of deep breaths help him relax we're not in a ranch riding pattern just get all the way to the center be smooth make sure I'm dead on the center line we'll give him a second to look around and relax set up my lobe departure set it up give it time and then get my lobe departure um, probably as a competitor right here, I'm thinking bridle him up a little bit, soften him. Uh, my back's to the judge. I'm going to use my hand a little bit and collect him. Again, hitting the center marker, um, aiming towards this big fast. I'm going to say, let's point to the outside of the arena. He wants to lean in a little bit to the left. So I'm making sure my hand is to the outside, really getting deep into those corners, but also not creating any more of a fight than I need to. So if he's leaning, I'm not going to pick a fight. I'm just going to be really clean. Uh, hit the center with a lot of speed, dead on the center. I was happy with how he changed leads, carrying lots of speed for this large, fast circle to the right. Again, back across the center line. He nails the slowdown. I like how he's really coming back to me, so I'm thinking turn him loose, start to loosen my reins and show off this small slow if I can, helping him to be really comfortable and showy in this lead change. Happy with how he hit the lead change in the center. Now I'm thinking bridle him up again, collect him, Start looking for the good ground. Get really straight around the corner. Square. Now lean back. Lean way back. Hold his front end up. Speed up. Speed up to it. And big stop. Really happy with how he stopped and pedaled there. The ground was good. So I wanted to send that horse with a lot of speed. Now sit and relax for a second. We've hit the stop. 
let him catch his breath, let him have a couple of deep breaths, and then start my spins. Half, one, two, three. Good. So like that's and that's how I think through it. Like stop and breathe for a little bit. Again, stop and breathe here for a little bit. Good or bad, put what's already happened behind you. If you drug a lead, you can't change it now. If you missed a stop, you can't change it now. So make sure that you can go ahead and let that horse catch his breath for a little bit and focus on the next element. So focus on these next set of spins, forget the stop, just go on to the spins. Really happy with him. He carried lots of speed, lots of cadence. Uh, from the judges chair watching this run, I'm really asking myself as a judge, are these maneuvers average, above average? Uh, are they very good? Are they excellent? Where do they rank? I uh, really like his stop and backup. I think this horse uh, really shows off a fancy backup, how quick he hustles, how he moves his front feet, goes from that stop immediately into that backup. Um, so, I, you know, from the judge's chair, I could probably plus one this stop and backup right there. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay, I have a couple questions about, about the run. You know, sometimes you'll be in the middle of the run, and I have, I have riders that tell me this too, and they're like, well, he's looking out of the arena and he just doesn't feel right. And, you know, what I wonder is, can the judge really tell everything that that rider is feeling? If it's not, you know, you could feel him around that one corner. Yes. But of course, me watching it, I couldn't really see much. Do you have anything you might be able to share with folks about, about what something looks like to a judge versus what it might feel like to the rider? Absolutely. And, and that's something that we do a lot here is we're training. And that's just to ask uh, a, a good set of eyes, how'd that look? What's this look like? Uh, we train and ride off based off of how it feels. But I'm going to say that, oh, I mean, two or three times a year, I have a run in the raining where I say that felt really good. Okay, so I'm talking 98% of the time. I am covering things up as I'm showing. So I'm going around there saying, this horse is leaning in a little bit. This horse is trying to go a little faster than what I wanted. This horse is kind of trying to slow down as I run and stop it. And there's all those little things I'm feeling, but our job at that point in time is not to fix that. Our job is to show. So how do we show through some of that stuff where it doesn't feel 100%? But the, we have to tell ourselves what I tell myself and coach is that the judge does not feel what I'm feeling. Our job is to show this horse to his strengths, minimize his weaknesses in the show pen, and try to get the judge to go ahead and say that this maneuver is above average. And that's really my job when I'm showing horses to, to try to have that judge move from saying average zero to plus half above average. I liked it. It's above average. And you're going to get a handful of above average scores a plus half and then hit a big plus one maneuver. And, and that's really, they may not feel like plus one maneuvers, but our job is to show that judge some of those maneuvers and cover up the stuff that's not working, showing off the stuff that is working. And really, I think as a rider, how you uh, your body language really affects those judges. So think about this. A, a rider runs and stops his horse and then turns around, looks at the tracks behind him and then shakes his head and lets all the air out. So like it's a, it's a stop, the horse bounces a little bit and the rider looks back like what? And then he goes, oh. what does the judge think? That probably wasn't very good. The rider's obviously not impressed with it. So clearly I don't like it either. Okay, so you're probably getting a minus half. The same stop, if you run down there and you run down there confidently and you get a stop and maybe it wasn't perfect, but you, you were leaning back and your horse held the ground and you just sit there like, that's what I meant to do. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm so happy with this horse right now. The judge doesn't know that you're not happy with it. You're not telling them through your body language that you're not happy with your horse. He's going to be a lot more prone to go, plus half or zero than on the negative side of that number card. And, and that's one thing is we're showing to cover up or minimize the mistakes. 
and to stay on the positive, to have positive body language about it. That, that is great. And, you know, there are some riders that may not have, you know, a plus one stopping horse. And maybe in the past, they've, you know, they've been a minus half to the stop. There's nothing wrong with the zero. That's we right. Might one and a half, but a zero, I mean, it is technically correct. Is that not that right? Is, that, my that first, is, yeah, my first goal is to, is to mark a 70. That's my very first goal with every horse I work. How do I get him to a 70? Marking zeros across the board. And then a couple of clean zeros will turn into plus halves. If he's an exceptionally good spinning horse or he's an exceptionally good stopping horse, those maneuvers will become plus halves. But, but you can't go try to be a plus half. You can't try to be big because then the horse is going to feel too much pressure and too much anxiety and your run's going to fall apart and you're trying too hard. You see that a lot with horses that run to a stop. And, and they're blasting off, they're kicking as hard as they can, the rider's kicking harder. And it's like, you're going way too fast, trying way too hard. Your horse is gonna bounce out of the ground three or four times and then come to a Morris code type of stop where he's bounced out of it, like a airplane landing with bad tires, you know? And that stop is gonna be a minus half to a minus one. And if as a rider, you say, I'm just gonna run down there at a really correct speed and get my horse to stop and hold the ground for a 10 foot slide, that's all I want. You're probably gonna be a zero. And if you get two of those in the last stop, you're like, my horse feels really good. And I feel like I could go ahead and push him a little bit harder. Well, if you push him a little bit harder, you're probably gonna to get to a 15 foot slide and probably a plus half. Yeah, that, that is absolutely great. I just have one more question then we'll move on to another video to review. During the run, you, you mentioned about checking Woodrow a little bit and just asking him to bridle up. And oftentimes folks will ask, well, is that distracting for the judge to see the rider actually bridle that horse up or get them to come back to them? So I, this is two questions. One, is it distasteful to the judge? And two, as a showman, what would be your reason for doing that? And when would you do it? Absolutely. Uh, the reining that we're looking for, again, a horse that is, from the judge's perspective first, willingly guided, dictated to completely with little to no apparent resistance. If you help the horse during the run by picking your hand up and it's done in a slow, smooth, tasteful manner, and the horse is, dials back or softens up or bridles up and he looks willingly guided, then it's okay. The judge is fine with that. If you pick your hand up and the horse looks like he's bracing or opening his mouth or he's resisting it, well, then the judges are going to be on the minus half side of those maneuvers, right? Because there's so much resistance to what's happening. Uh, and then from the competitor side, the, re the purpose in doing that would be to help your horse understand where he needs to be in the pattern. So for Woodrow, uh, he can lope really slow, but if he's loping too slow, then maybe he's going to break gait at the lead change on a small, slow lead change, or maybe he drags a lead. And I also don't want him speeding up. So it's like, as I enter into the small, slow, as I'm leaving the large, fast entering into it, I may bridle him up just a little bit. But again, the key to using your hand is keeping it low. Think about that rider that picks their hand up above the saddle horn really high. Everybody can see it. The judge can see it from a long ways away, but he can't see how hard you're pulling or how much contact you make. He just sees your hand is way up in the air. So you can use your reins and take hold because again, he can't see how hard you're pulling. He can't see what you feel if your hand is lower and closer to the horse's neck. And that's what I try to remember. If I'm going to bridle him up and collect him in the show pen, I want to make sure my hand is close to the horse's neck. So it doesn't look like I'm as obviously taking hold or pulling as it does, like my hand is just low and I've got a little bit tighter rein. But I'll do that to help the horse be stable where he's at and consistent in his speed in the circle. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I think it'd be really great to shift gears just a little bit and um, show another video, get your impressions as a judge or showman as the video is shown. And um, Jill, do you have something you can show for? Yeah, do we just want to review um, a couple of, of runs 
Uh, does that sound good? Does that work? Sure. Okay. Let me get my screen share going here, guys. Just a second. Mm -mm. While Jill's doing that, Ben, you know, the other day you were you were talking about, and I think this is real important because we are less than eight weeks away from our first show in Bryan this year. And we're about to hit some, some patches of really bad weather. We had talked a little bit about what people can do if they can't ride. So I want to circle back around at some point and talk about mental prep. Absolutely. I, something I'm excited about and passionate about, and I could probably talk for the next two hours about it but I'll try to keep it short and sweet. And then uh, we'll talk about that kind of, like you said, uh, maybe after this run, if that works for you. Yeah, that's great. So this horse is entering the arena. Um, based upon what I can see sitting here, it looks like we're hitting a small slow circle to the left, entering into our large fast circle to the left. Horse looks willingly guided. looks like it's staying between the reins. Uh, we're not seeing uh, anything that makes me think this is um, above average. So from the judge's perspective, I'm sitting there thinking this is probably a nice, clean, average circle. So I'm kind of marking that a zero for the circle. We executed a clean lead change as best I could tell on the screen here. And um, looks like we're entering a large fast, now moving into that small slow. And here's an example of a horse that's kind of raising its head into that small slow circle. And I'm going to say like the first half of that kind of looks like some resistance as the rider enters the small slow, the horse elevates and lifts his neck. Here too, we've got some resistance, a late lead change, a break of gait, entering into the penalties there. And a horse, again, that is coming up over the bridle, doesn't look as willingly guided. So from the judge's perspective, I'm gonna be a minus half in the circle. Looks like a penalty one for late lead change and a penalty two for break of gait. Coming around the corner, uh, nice straight square stop, zero kind of stop. And what you're seeing at this point, like from a, a little bit of a rider's standpoint, you're thinking, okay, if this is just a little weekend show, I may be schooling my horse now. My horse wasn't very good in the right circles. We've missed the lead change. I may be schooling these stops and spins now. I'm not as concerned about what I score. I'm concerned about making my horse better for the next show. If you're sitting there at a world show situation, you're like, boy, I better make up some ground. I'm three penalty points in the hole, I better really catch up. And my horse is a big stopper. Well, then I might run him really hard to those stops. But that's only in a world show situation where I'm trying to catch up in some points. In this type of situation, I'm probably going to go ahead and school my horse and make sure that he's listening to me and is dialed back a little bit in the speed, making sure that horse will be better next time I show him. Uh, this stop was a good square straight stop. Enter into a correct set of spins. Maybe losing a little bit of cadence as we get ready to stop. But like we watch those horses, we want to see them really fast all the way to the shutoff. Now, I like how this gal is taking her time before she lopes off. Like after each stop, she has taken about three to four seconds and helped that horse relax and be calm after the stops. And that's really important for a horse's longevity that you take the time to pause between maneuvers. Again, three to five second pause, couple of deep breaths, let that horse settle in between the maneuvers will help him have more longevity and less anxiety when you're showing. That is great. Oh, pull that video back up, Jill, if you don't mind. Um, one of the things I was thinking about here is that, you know, our, our program styled plus one. So if we went back through this run just a little bit, Ben, are there spots where we really could have maybe prevented the next bad change or I say slow change, break a gate? Is there something that she might have been able to do after the first circle leading to the second circle or at any point in this run? She did a great job at the end, just like you complimented her on. Anything that she could have done to help? Yeah, again, when I look at this run and coaching from a coaching perspective, my number one goal on this horse would be to get my lead changes clean. It looks like this horse is a naturally big stopper, has a nice step to the turnaround. Uh, but I'm thinking I really need to be prepared for my lead changes, and especially that second lead change. And that's going to be something I'm going to practice a lot before I get to the show is this lead change right here. Because this horse uh, right here is an indication to me that he's not moving his shoulder out of the way well. 
When we slow down and we steer to the right, that horse leans to the left shoulder. So if we stop this right here, you watch that horse leans, 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 leans towards that shoulder. He never yep. really gets his body straight. He never gets his shoulder out of the way. And that's why he dumps there, drops his shoulder back to the left to the new direction right here, dragging that lead. And we're thinking, okay, because of the three points in the hole and kind of zero on the rest of the maneuvers, we're sitting on like a, a 67 kind of a score, maybe a 68, but somewhere between a 67 and 68. And to, to change that to a 70 is getting that lead change clean because our stops and our spins are working, but we need to focus on the lead change. So preparing to work on it, working on it every day, getting the horse's shoulder control better where you can stand his shoulder up straight, move the shoulder out of the way will really help this horse in the lead change. And that's going to bump your score three to four points. That's great. All right, uh, Jill, let's see if you've got another queued up for us. You bet. There's a few people who have sent me a message that they're having a trouble seeing the screen. And I'm not sure why, because several people have told me they can see the, the video, but we'll just kind of keep rolling and know that on our um, recording, that we're going to have um, that we will you'll be able to see those runs so um, I'm going to try a different view here and see if that helps some of these folks make sure they can maybe they can see it Whoop, wrong one let's try this again here and, and we're talking about mental preparation a little bit ago Shannon and that's that lead change kind of as an example of an area that you could prepare and plan ahead to say, okay, my horse struggles moving the shoulder left to right. It's going to be a little rougher slowing down. It's going to be a little tougher to get my lead change. So I'm going to really prepare and study this horse for what it feels like when I move his shoulder well from left to right. When I've got lots of shoulder control, what does that feel like? And memorize that feel and then mentally prepare like, the day before and the morning of you're getting ready for the raining, you're just sitting there thinking, uh, and, you know, and then I'll even kind of get away in a quiet, maybe a tack stall or sit in the truck and plan that run, plan what it's going to feel like, how I'm going to execute it and, and really have that feel to say, as I enter that small, slow circle, I'm going to shorten up my rain. I'm going to guide to the right for my small, slow. I'm going to clear the shoulder as I approach the lead change. I'm going to clear the shoulder stand them up straight, and then change. But I'm going to practice that in my mind, mentally preparing for probably 10 to 15 minutes that morning before I show. And the more prepared I am mentally, even if things get a little hectic right beforehand, I don't have the warm up I need, I can still execute a really good run because mentally I'm prepared. That is great. That is great. Thank you for that. You're gotcha. welcome. Here, yeah. I believe we've got a, another run queued up. Okay, thank you. Okay, it looks like we're running and stopping. We, from here, I can tell we get past our end marker. We get all the way down the arena. Course looks good. Nice set of spins. Um, you know, the horse maybe gets a little, a little high headed in that spin, a little rigid looking to the outside. So I'm just going to be a solid zero. We had cadence. We were correct, but nothing that was above average to me in that set of spins. So a solid zero. Uh, this is a really nice stop. If we have a little bit more speed in this stop, we could easily move to a plus half. If the horse gets deep, he pedals up front. We just need more speed. He looks relaxed doing the rundown too. He does. Yeah, he looks really nice. I get another really nice set of correct spins. So it, as a rider, I'm thinking, hey, I, I've, I've been clean both ends. I'm going to really send this horse now for a really big stop in the middle. There you go. There it is. Yeah. And, and, and from a judge's perspective, almost we, we don't have a plus quarter mark. We have zero and plus half. But if an exhibitor shows me two stops that are kind of above average but not not way better but they're they're almost there and that third stop's better then i'm sure gonna plus that third stop okay i've been on the on the brink of a plus half a couple of times now i'm gonna give them a full plus half in that third stop because 
they pushed a little bit harder than before and I was close to a plus half, I'm gonna give it to them. That's great. What we're looking at now, like a nice correct circle of horses, very relaxed for the first small slow, moving to our large fast. Horse looks comfortable, looks confident. We're not overshowing this horse straight through the lead change. Looks like the lead change is really clean from what I can tell here. And again, very correct. We're not seeing a high degree of difficulty. We're not seeing lots of speed. So this, this circle isn't moving me to a plus half mark yet. Okay. I'm just sitting on a really correct, solid zero for this circle. And, and, and it's hard to tell on the screen. It almost looked like we had two large fast. Uh, and I think we were supposed to have a large fast, small, slow. So again, to plus that, we need some more variance in our speed and circle size. This Correct. is a dream bad, good stopper. Yeah, yeah, nice stopper, uh, clean, correct pattern. One of the things you see on that pattern is sometimes the riders get too close to that wall on the far side. And those horses tend to lean towards the wall. The closer they are to it, the more they want to lean to it. So I, I like to split the difference to think of a line down the center of the pen and your exterior wall and find the middle of that. So you're probably 20 to 30 foot from the arena wall. And that's where you'd run and stop. The judge can see it a little bit better. Those horses are going to run straighter. And again, like this horse, like looks really relaxed through the pattern. The rider did a great job showing, but I think we could be a little bit more aggressive. And the horse looks like a big stopper. So instead of just, you know, marking a really nice clean 70 with those big stops on that horse, we could probably mark a 72, uh, 73, really pushing the stops. And even like that last one, you should feel confident. Like my horse has been stopping good. He feels consistent. This ground is good. I'm going to send him hard. This is the world show. I'm going to run at this last stop again because the horse and rider has built confidence through the run that it's going to work. So send them down there for that last big stop to secure the plus half to plus one stop from the judge. That's great. And I also think that in some of the patterns, there's a certain distance off that side fence that riders are supposed to maintain. Otherwise mm -hmm. they'll get for that too. I believe. That's right. Yeah. Jill, what else do we have? Um, we have a few things that are some examples. Um, they lead into some penalties, but um, we might look at them and get Ben's perspective on what the rider could have done different going yeah. into it. Um, let's see here if I can share this for you guys. Okay. This specifically, um, I chose this because of the rider really not setting up the lead change. So we're approaching the middle and doing another large fast circle. And again, as we think about setting up a lead change, we're really thinking about getting that horse straight across the middle. Most horses lean towards the shoulder where they want to go into the new direction. We've changed leads, we've changed directions, they'll lean in too far. And in like right here, where we've drugged that lead, almost looks like twofold. We don't clear the shoulder out of the way and we are not cueing in the center of the arena. And, and that's another thing you, sometimes the rider can be timid to cue with that new foot, but don't be afraid to clear the shoulder, move the shoulder towards the left and bring your left foot back. So cue, like the horse changes leads behind when she does cue, but drags it up front so we've kind of lost momentum we're slowing down and then we sure drag the lead and break the gate so set them up and ask for the change dead center and practice that at home so you can find the center of the arena set them up and change dead center it will help that horse and you at the show pen very good perfect so I've got another one, um, and this video is actually from the World Show um, a couple of years ago. And um, 
the the horse is really looking towards that gate that he came in where all his buddies are and and the warm up pin and um, we'll see kind of what happens and and maybe what the rider might have done a little bit different in this situation. So we're trotting in the center. Looks good. Um, so we. As we get ready to lope off, this horse almost kind of jumps into that lope departure. And we, we lope off in the wrong lead. And our goal is to feel like set it up as quick as you can. So right here, this horse kind of starts to move around a little bit. And we want to see how that horse felt that spur pressure and then looked to the right and took the wrong lead. I want to set still and be able to apply my leg and feel that horse's body move away from my pressure before I lope it off. So you're gonna set it up before you lope off, get the correct lead. If your horse does this, just change leads as fast as you can. So if you feel you're in the wrong lead, change lead as quick as possible to avoid the penalties. And do you, you know, think to there, Ben, was that horse was thinking gate. He had yes. just come in from all his friends and really was not in the frame of mind. That's right. That left circle. And, and that's a place where we talk about uh, should you pick your hand up or should you leave your hand down? And I feel like the trotting in is a place where a rider has almost, um, I'm not going to say a free zone because you're being judged. You can incur penalties there, but you have a, a place and you're trotting in that you can bridle that horse up. And what I like to do is start on a little bit shorter rein as I trot in and I'm feeling my horse's thought process. What is my horse thinking about as I trot to the middle of the arena? And if I'm trotting to the middle and I feel that horse looking back at the out gate or looking back towards where his friends were, then I'm going to keep a little bit shorter rein as I start my pattern. And, and I want to keep a shorter rein because then I can control that horse's thoughts, his feet, where he's going and have control over him. So just like that horse, the more he leaned to the right and looked out, the more prone he was to take the wrong lead, taking the right lead towards the gate. If she shortens her reins and bridles him up a little bit as she trots in, Maybe she has him a little bit more captured and has his thoughts a little bit more to where she feels that horse centered when she asks for the lead, he takes the correct lead next time because she's got him a little bit more bridled up. Yeah, so the horse was thinking right, picked up the right lead. But here's where I think the rider, just like you said, Ben, the, the, the rider has a lot of control right there at the beginning about setting that horse up for success. Mm -hmm. you know, lope off really quickly. When you said the word captured, you were talking about mentally bringing that horse back to its job. That's AKA right. Capture them and take your time to get in that lead. Now you trot around a quarter of a circle, but you can take your time and set your horse up. To That's set right. him up. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Have you got something? Yeah, we've got one other um, video here and we talked a little bit, Ben had talked a little bit about, you know, kind of what your horse is capable of and, and where you're showing him at what level. So um, we will look at one more video and, um, you know, kind of um, see Ben's thoughts on this exhibitor and how, how much he's pushing this horse. And um, if this is what would be the ideal thing here and, and, maybe to improve their score just a little bit. Okay, so we're around the corner. We're coming for our, our stop. Horse looks good. Now we're going pretty fast. Okay, horse uh, held the ground from what we can see. Maybe it bounced a little bit right in the beginning. Um, probably a solid zero for that stop. Our spins uh, start to come out of control. We start to lose the hind quarters. The hind quarter starts fishtailing around. We're losing cadence. So for me, that stop, that spin is not correct. We don't have the cadence. I'm going to call that spin a minus half to a minus one. Now for this stop, again, uh, our horse about halfway down the arena, our horse starts to raise up and looks like he's uh, holding on extremely hard to try to slow that horse down. And then the horse blasts off to the stop. And this is, again, a little bit where we talked about that speed, being able to control your horse in the rundown where you're dictating the speed. Now, notice 
the very last lope departure, the horse is more amped up than all the previous stops. Now he is sliding like this last stop. He slides and he stops hard. However, the score for that stop, like we all focus on the stop, but that scoring starts with the lope departure. So after we finish our spins, our spins are done. Now the judge is judging from the lope departure, straight line into the stop, the sliding stop and the backup. It's all one score. So for me watching this, the horse has a credit earning stop. It's a big stop. But for me, the way the horse dances and then lopes and then blasts off to me is below average. So I've got a below average rundown with a plus half stop. I want to give her credit, but the lope departure wasn't any good and the approach wasn't any good. So I have to leave that maneuver at a zero. I can't plus half that maneuver. And then to the horse's longevity, what we saw as the run developed, the horse went fast to the first stop, faster to the third stop, kind of spun fast and kind of lost some credit and some control in the spins. And then by the time we loped off for our third stop, the horse wouldn't even stand still, just blasted into it. And so that's an example of the horse who's uh, getting more and more pressure, more and more anxiety about a run and starts to dread the work or anticipate it too much and wants to go too hard. And with that type of horse at home, you can work your pattern at home by starting into a pattern. Let the horse think he's on a pattern and then when he starts to take off on the straight line, like, ooh, I'm going to run stop. I'm on pattern. Just break him to a walk, walk him till his anxiety and his heart rate comes down, and then start again. And every time his heart rate comes up and he gets anxious, break him back to a walk, walk him a little ways till he relaxes, then start again. But a horse like that needs a little bit of schooling and a little bit of work between the show season, between the maneuvers, helping him relax so he'll last uh, with longevity into the next year of showing. So that horse looks like he's kind of a, a junior horse, a younger horse. And mm -hmm. seeing that horse run and he built speed and anxiety after each, um, each rundown. How many rides do you think it would take for that horse to not feel anxious in the show pen, even after that one showing? Um, quite a few. You know, every, every horse is different. Some horses that are very laid back mentally, you can show that horse pretty aggressively multiple times before they feel anything because they're just a, a very laid back, lazy kind of horse. A horse that's big motored naturally and has a lot of uh, sensitivity and high feel, those horses remember a lot. They're very aware of their surroundings. They have a, a great memory and they're very sensitive. So those horses that are super sensitive, like, hypothetically that's a very sensitive horse it could take three to six months eight months for that horse to come back to a very relaxed place in the show pen uh, we can improve on having the control and slowing him down within a couple of months but to really have him like loose rein lope off on a loose rein and approach that stop on a loose rein it, it could it could be a, uh, quite a while for that to happen and some horses like there are some horses that, that, that stop better if you're kind of holding their front end up as they approach it. But I think the, the big difference we look for is, is that rider holding on for dear life, trying to slow them down as they run to the stop? Or is that rider just lightly supporting the horse? Because if you're just supporting him with your reins and you have light contact and you're supporting him as you drive to that stop, it's okay. And the stop is going to show us this can be a, a square straight stop holding the ground from the beginning and the horse is going to be comfortable with it because you're just supporting him. But if it's like white knuckles and you're praying your reins don't break because you're going too fast, the judge is going to be on the minus half side. And, and I say that because I've been there and I know what it feels like. I got ready to show a horse one time and I asked Jordan Larson, I said, Jordan, what do I need to think about to get this horse ready for the reining? And he said, you know, I, I'd probably, I'd probably go buy a new pair of reins. <laughs> I said, what's that going to do, Jordan? He said, well, your new ones won't break when you have to pull on them that hard. <laughs> Thank you. That's such helpful advice. 
That is great. That but is I've, great. I've been there and I know what it feels like. And it's just going to take some schooling to dial a horse like that back to where he's really confident in the show pen. Well, as we get ready to kind of wrap up and this has been just fabulous information tonight. Thank you, Ben, for sharing your, your, your thoughts and your ideas. I want to really go back to that mental side of, of, of the reining mental preparedness for the rider or mental preparedness for the horse. I know a lot of folks ask, how do I know if my horse is warmed up? I know a lot of people get really, you know, with their hands, they're running the pattern with their fingers, trying to figure things out. So in our closing few minutes, could you just share some words of wisdom either for the horse or for the rider for both? Absolutely. And, and what I think about getting ready to go show, uh, we're going to show in Fort Worth in a couple of weeks. And I'm, I'm working my horses to get ready. I'm studying my pattern so I know what the pattern is. And that's what helps me prepare mentally is knowing the pattern, studying the pattern, and executing the maneuvers. And as early as I can get that, I start mentally preparing. Um, and that for me is to just to get somewhere quiet and study the pattern. So uh, let's say um, I'm going to lope off in the right lead. So what is it going to feel like to trot to the middle, collect my horse, take a breath, feel the hindquarters shift to the right, and pick my hand up, asking to lope off very slowly into the right lead. I'm looking up. My horse lopes off. He feels good. Now I'm going to start to do my large, fast circle. So I'm lowering my hand. I'm leaning forward. I'm wanting to show this judge that I'm here to be aggressive and correct. And my horse is willingly guided. And I'm starting to show that off. But that's how I break every reigning run down. That's that detailed not just to say large faster to the right small slow right change leads no what is every step going to feel like and as i execute this pattern i'm feeling every step in my mind and going through what it's going to feel like all the way through the run and then i also after i complete that part of my mental warm-up and my mental exercise through the whole run i do that and then I go ahead and stop and I say, okay, now I'm going to look at it as if I were watching a movie and I'm going to watch it as if I'm watching myself. So how would I look as I'm running my circle? Well, I'm going to lean forward. I'm going to look where I'm going. It's going to be a good picture. My horse is going to be aggressive and, and I'm going to really show with confidence. That's what it's going to look like. And that's how I plan and think through my run. And with that thought process going in, when I get to the show and I'm ready to show, I feel confident. I feel ready. I run the pattern in my mind perfectly about 10 times now. So now all I have to do is just go execute it because it's been done in my mind 10 times well. I'm ready to go. Uh, and that, that helps me have confidence at the show, helps me to enjoy showing more. And really, you'll find you'll go in there with a lot more confidence. Uh, what we don't want to do, and, and I've done it myself many times, but if we go in there, we think, oh, man, I'm terrible at lead changes. I can't even feel leads. And my horse is terrible at lead changes, too. And I hate lead changes. They're the worst thing in the world. They're my nemesis. And I hate lead changes. What's going to happen? He's going to drag a lead. All right? It's not going to work. Why? Because you've been telling yourself it's not going to work. Mentally, you've been telling yourself you're not good at it, and you can't do it, and it's not going to work you're going to drag lead in the show pen. So as you prepare mentally, really, you need to prepare positively. You have to have positive self-talk. You have to be positive about how your pattern is going to be. And you need to go into it with the hope and uh, expectation that it's going to go well. If it doesn't go well, you fix it afterwards. After the show's all done, you pet your horse on his neck, walk out and say, next week when I'm at home, I'm going to work on this. Uh, fixing it as you exit the arena doesn't do anything. Um, getting frustrated with your horse doesn't do anything. But making a new plan to say, okay, next time around, I'm going to work on my stops. I'm going to work on my spins. That's my plan for the next horse show. And that's really, it helps me stay focused, helps me be confident. And, and really, uh, I get to go to the show pen and enjoy what I'm doing and have fun knowing every horse is prepared for that day. That is fabulous. That is awesome. 
Ben, we've had a couple of questions that uh, folks piped in. If you're okay sure. with it, we're going to go past just a, a seven if, a little bit. I'd like to that read those. Fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. So Abby is asking, if you're getting ready to show a three-year-old for its first time this year, what are some good tips? Go slow. I really, uh, make sure your horse is confident with all the maneuvers at home. Your fly lead changes, your stops, your spins, make sure that horse can execute those maneuvers 98% of the time at home before you get in the show pen. Showing those three-year-olds for the first time, what can tend to happen is we feel like I'm entered, I have to show, but I don't have a very good lead change yet. Well, if your horse has anxiety about the lead change and he doesn't know what to do yet and you get to the show pen and you rush through it, you're going to create more anxiety in the show pen. And really making sure that when your horse is ready to show, you enter them and you show them. And the first time, like what I try to feel the first time I enter the show pen is that horse is very relaxed. He's very quiet. Uh, he lets me set him up for the lead change, for the, for the stops, for the spins. And he, mentally, he's with me. He's not thinking two strides ahead of me or out the gate, but mentally, that horse is relaxed and with me through the whole pattern. Yeah, and, and, and I love that, Ben. And those young horses, they don't really know what the pattern is. Make it a great experience for them. That's right. That's exactly right. So um, we have another question, and here it is. What is the visual rate difference that you would look for between the small, slow, and the large, fast um, for a, a point gain or for credit earning? Um, this this uh, competitor says that she's seen super fast and then super slow, but it doesn't look natural. Okay, good question. And I'm going to take the approach of, uh, like, how do we get to a plus half circle? And that's what we're, our, our job is to try to get that judge to give us a plus half. And the plus half being above average. So think of it this way, a horse that is a beautiful moving horse, a horse that's really stylish in the way they travel, the way they lope. The horse's frame and uh, body control is, is very pretty. He's a good looking horse. He's uh, maybe just a or maybe it's a really pretty elegant mare that catches the judge's eye. That horse doesn't have to go as large fast or as small slow because it is such a pretty stylish, naturally good moving horse. It already has the judge's attention. That horse is, that judge is already like, I like this horse. I like how this run looks. It doesn't have to go as fast. Now, if I'm showing a horse that maybe isn't as natural a mover, uh, isn't as pretty the way it travels, however, that horse is stays in lead really good going fast and really slows down hard, then I'm gonna show that part of the circle on a very loose rein and send him on a loose rein for a large, fast, small, slow. And, and you're trying to uh, really, again, in a, in a situation where you're trying to get marked, show that judge a large, difference between a big fast and a small slow circle so if you're really running and he slows down willingly guided dictated to complete with little to no resistance and really goes as slow as possible you're going to get to that plus half or plus one because you're showing a huge variance between large fast to a small slow great awesome uh ben we have one more question mm -hmm. uh, Question is, what's a good exercise for the rider to use to keep the horse straight in the center? Uh, this competitor says that her horse anticipates the lead change. Mm -hmm. A horse anticipates the lead change and it may lean to the new direction. So one of the things that I like to do, if I'm in a, let's say a left circle, I'm doing a small, slow left circle, getting ready to change leads to the right. I will go ahead and come around that small, slow left circle. And I'm gonna ask my horse to get straight. I'm gonna pick my hand up in the bridle reins or in, in snaffle, I'm gonna move my hands to the side and ask that horse to get his body straight. And I wanna be able to look down his pole and feel his from the pole to the tail is straight. And if it's not, I may just move the shoulder to the left 
and into another small, slow left circle. So what I'm doing is using my outside leg and bridling my hand up, asking the horse to move his shoulder to the inside. And I may do that four times around that small, slow circle. So it's almost like shoulder in, relax, shoulder in, relax, shoulder in, relax. And that helps the horse understand he can move the shoulder in and then lope off relaxed. And after four or five times of doing that in your small, slow circle, you'll pick your hand up, your horse will move the shoulder to the left, therefore getting straight. And then after the fourth or fifth time, you do that in the middle, asking for the lead change. Clear the shoulder, ask for the lead change. After the change, I may break him to a walk and walk a circle to the left. Because the more you change leads and change directions, he'll anticipate the new direction. So I like to change leads and either counter canter or break to a walk to help that horse relax. Great question. Oh my, I, you have a big, oh my, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. So uh, listen, I wanna just uh, shout out to Stock Horse of Texas for putting on these fabulous, fabulous programs. Um, these are really special. There are not a lot of organizations that do programs like this for its members and competitors. And we have folks all over the Northern continent. We have folks from Canada. We have Utah, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma. Um, I'm probably missing a bunch of them, but we have uh, folks from Alaska. I don't, Alaska. Know who, I don't know where they're riding in Alaska, but we have somebody from Alaska with us tonight. So that's, that's really cool too. That's cool. How fun. Yeah, so Ben, thank you very much. We're going to see you again real soon in a few weeks. And all of you stay tuned. January 11th, next Tuesday, six o'clock, we're going to go over Ranch Trail with our great friend Bozo Rogers. And then Ben will come back and help us one more time as we continue on with the Plus One webinar series. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.